Welcome to a garden tour number two and things have changed so much since the last time you were here. In this past month we have still had heaps of rain but also <laughs> the past week it has turned into absolutely beautiful weather. Because it's been raining things have kind of gotten a little bit out of control for me. Now because I am trying to get things all in order in the garden after all of this rain you may notice that I have a few outfit changes and that's just because I'm trying to get it all neat and tidied up while I'm talking with you guys and it's gonna take me a few days I think and let's start the garden tour off with what's right here I had been talking about these dahlias and they weren't growing and they were the latest ones to bloom and then they were like oh uh, they were little when I showed them to you last but look at them now there are so many flowers on these dahlias they're absolutely beautiful and there's so many more buds that are ready to like come out and then also there are sunflowers growing now they are starting to bloom and they're I don't know maybe four to six inches in diameter but those sunflowers were supposed to be Russian giants which they are absolutely not so I don't know if we just haven't had enough Sun or what's going on with them but they're still beautiful it looks like it's gonna turn into a beautiful day but it also means it's quite hot so I've put my hat on um, but we're gonna start behind me and behind me is where we had the black beans that I grew from store-bought black beans. We have some sunflowers, all of the zucchini. Um, yeah, so I'll show you. So the sunflowers back here are looking absolutely beautiful. But like I said, they're very small. I do have this one sunflower here. He was bent down here and he's just kind of grown a little bit wonky. Oh, he looks like, oh, he's covered with those vine hoppers. So all of these guys here, see how they're like moving around? They are vine hoppers and they will ruin this plant. So I need to get in here and take them off um, so they don't ruin it. And they will also go to the passion fruit as well. So I need to get rid of them. With these vine hoppers, I'm actually just gonna go through and Ah, oh, so I thought I was just going to be able to go through and just squash those vine hoppers like you would, um, well, you could do with a bunch of other bugs, but they are far too quick. They just hop right off of the vine. So I'm going to have to go get some neem oil and fix that up. And then I'm just going to spray the sunflower stems with the neem oil and hopefully that will get rid of them. It's particularly effective in preventing the adverse effect of insects that suck and rasp like aphids, thrips, whitefly, scale insect, mealybug, leaf miners, codling moths, and also helps with grass grub, black spots, and a rust. It also says it is non-toxic to humans, birds, earthworms, bees, and animals. This is what I use in my garden. And even honestly, I don't even really use it very often. I've only used it on a few different things. Um, a lot of times I use it with the aphids, but we're going to try it here with the uh vine hoppers so let's get this sprayed on the neem oil won't kill the vine hoppers directly but once they start to suck on the stem of the sunflower they'll also suck up some of the neem oil and that's when it will get them i've never seen this before but in the little neck of the um the leaf in the sunflower it's growing what looks to be a small sunflower and i think there's a couple of them Okay, we'll move on to these beans here. Look at it, they're growing wonderfully. And they are also flowering. And I think, if I could, oh, they, oh boy, this is bigger than actually what I've seen. They have been flowering and the beans are growing. So that's awesome. So with these, because they're the black beans that I want to save and dry, we're just going to leave these. And then once they have all dried out, then we're just going to pull them off and get the beans from them. And then we can save some black beans, which will be awesome. And we'll see how many we get at the end of the season. I also have my artichokes growing back here and they're all kind of at different stages. The one in the far end over there, that has produced two large artichokes and is now actually growing its own like new, plants up from the bottom which is really cool the middle one is still quite small it hasn't really done much yet it's just growing but it hasn't budded or anything and then this other one here on the end currently has two 
nice size artichokes growing and then I just saw down here it has another little bud so we'll get a few artichokes off of that one on this side of the bed where the zucchini is I did used to have spinach plants but now I have actually changed that so I have some little tomatillos growing and you have to make sure that you have at least two tomatillo plants growing together otherwise you won't get any tomatillos they do need at least two to produce fruit and then here is my Queensland blue pumpkin it is it's had tons and tons of flowers and now it is growing longer but I did have a second Queensland blue pumpkin that was growing really nicely <laughs> Allie ran that over with the lawnmower when he came in here, so we're just down to one plant now. I haven't gotten any yellow zucchinis yet, but the green ones are growing really well, and I even picked my first Balmoral courgette yesterday. So this is the Balmoral courgette, so I do have another one growing. My green zucchinis, I have loads of them growing in there. See, there's just, there's three just on this plant okay let's move on to the middle section of my garden and that is where all of my potatoes are planted and my new zealand yams and horseradish all sorts so i'll show you <laughs> so let's have a look at our potatoes first now the ends are still very nice and green they have flowered already so they are starting to die off so if you really look over here you can see like they don't look very good but we have to wait until the whole plant even the tops start to die off before we rummage around and see what our potatoes look like then we have our new zealand yams growing so these are i need to mound these guys up but i need a bit more soil before i do that i'm always low on soil i should really do my own compost and then we have our rhubarb which is growing a little bit in here so the sh stalks are still very short but maybe we can harvest some this year and the second plant which I didn't think was going to do anything is coming back which is fantastic it just took a little bit longer so that's good the horseradish is doing phenomenal so I'm hoping that as many green leaves as it has out here it has just as many roots down below but I'm not quite ready to harvest that horseradish uh, I've seen some things that say that you can actually smell the horseradish when it's ready to be picked, which I haven't smelled that yet. I'm thinking probably closer to the end of summer, I will check to see exactly what's going on with the horseradish and we'll hopefully get a good harvest. Let's move on to my tomato bed. Last time, this was the very last thing I wanted to show you because I was so excited about it. <sighs> There have been some things that have happened since the last time you saw this tomato bed. So first thing you might notice when looking at the tomato bed is that there is a new trellis in the center of that. We had a bit of a windstorm and the indeterminate tomatoes were barely hanging on. I had to come out here and rig up some things to stop them from falling over and breaking. So shortly after that windstorm happened, Allie came out and built a nice trellis for me. As you can see, the tomatoes have grown up this trellis and have quickly surpassed it. So in this past month, they have grown. So they were about at the top of the trellis. To be fair, they were at the top of the trellis when he made it, but they have continued to grow much taller than the trellis. But the tomatoes are doing really well. As you can see, they're just covered with tomatoes so they're doing really really well the indeterminate tomatoes are doing so well so i'm happy with that that's really good however my roma tomatoes which i was supposed to use to make all of my sauce this year and do my canning oh, i have had to pull half of those roma tomatoes and there's only been one that has actually seemed extremely healthy this whole time. I think we've had just had too, too much rain and they've just been getting moldy and just rotting. The struggle I've been having is that I know when your tomatoes get like this, you should be pulling them straight away. 
and getting them out of the bed and I've just been, I wanted to save them so badly and I think that's why it's actually spread because it started with this one end plant here and I've just cut out what I could of all the bad parts instead of just pulling the whole plant and now it's it's happened to this one on this side and over on the other side as well which I can show you I've actually pulled two of them and the no I've pulled three of them over on this side and the other one I've cut back a lot but I did have excess tomatoes so I've just replaced them with uh, not really sure. I'm not sure if they are also Romas or if they are the cream sausage tomato. Things got a little get, bit confusing with all my seedlings. I didn't have them labeled properly when I repotted them. I am worried about the fact that I've planted them in the same place that the other ones that were diseased were planted, but hopefully it will be okay. The plants that are here though, they are growing tomatoes so that's a good sign and hopefully we'll get some and they're still flowering this is the one that is doing absolutely fantastic before moving on i just want to take this extra stake that i have and tie up the upper part of my tomatoes because i don't want this to get damaged by any future wind that we might have I don't know what I'm going to do when it gets much taller because I can't reach much higher. This one needs its own stake. So that sorts the two end tomatoes. I'm going to, I think, leave these as they are for now. They're just starting to get a little bit too tall but they don't necessarily need the staking like those at the back did. My oregano on both sides of the trellis is just going absolutely nuts, but I love how it's just kind of flopping down over the edge of the garden bed here. It's beautiful. And then my sage is growing well and my marjoram. And I'm hoping at some point I can put together an Italian seasoning with all of the herbs I have, just drying them and mixing it all up. Maybe I can even use that in my own sauce if my tomatoes would just grow properly. So there are a few things that need sorting in this bed today. This is my dill, which as you can see, I did harvest a lot of it, but now it's starting to go to seed. What kind of bug is that? That's like a big aphid. I'm sure he's not supposed to be in my garden. I'll have to have a look. So I'll get them out in a minute. My parsley here, this was looking beautiful yesterday and obviously something came through last night and just ate so many of the leaves. And I have a feeling it is the parakeets that are doing this. So I just have to go through and trim that up. Luckily, I was already able to harvest a ton of parsley, so not that bad. Those birds, did you hear them? <laughs> That's them now. I also have my lettuce that is starting to bolt as well. So I need to pull these, grab the lettuce that I can from them and plant some more lettuce because I believe all of my lettuce has started to bolt. So I'm just starting off by going through and picking all of the ripe tomatoes we have, pulling that bolted lettuce, and then I have seeds that I want to plant. So because all of my coriander and dill have finished up, I wanted to plant some more of those, but I also wanted to put in some more lettuce and bok choy. So we can kind of have a succession planting of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't been great with my succession planting this year. So um, ideally you'd want a continuous supply of things, but I'm a bit behind. So now that everything's done, now I'm planting my seeds. <laughs> Maybe next round I'll do a little bit better with this. Also, I don't have a designated spot 
that I'm putting all of these things, I'm just making a point to put them in areas that look a little bit bare. So around the tomatoes, because I'm just trellising them up the one stem, there's quite a bit of empty space there. So I'm just taking advantage of that to plant those seeds in. We are over at the Cape Gooseberries now and they're still growing out of control. I have just gone through them and kind of taken off all of the bad leaves because there seems to be a lot of powdery mildew on them, um, but it doesn't seem to be affecting their growth or their health or anything like that. But there are quite a few in here that we can harvest, so that's what I'm going to do now. love them. I have my harvest and a mishmash of other things in here. And I have all my Cape gooseberries in here. I have some tomatoes at the bottom. Um, I just took some time to tie up all of these gooseberries because they were just kind of sprawling all over again. So I've tied them up. I keep bringing, tying them up higher and higher. I don't know what I'm going to do once they kind of reach the top of that stake. But um, there are some other really cool things going on in this bed, so I just want to show you exactly what has changed since the last time you had a look. On the end of my bed, there's my gourd. It has grown quite a bit, so pretty soon it will be able to hang, start hanging over the side. I've got some beets growing in here, and they're starting to fill out just ever so slightly. There's my beet. But my Hungarian yellow, oh boy, has a few of these little peppers in there so that's really exciting again look at all my flowers and my dahlia they're so pretty and more they just keep growing more and more and the rest of these peppers here so they are flowering budding and flowering but I don't see anything growing on these yet I do have one pepper plant that has well a few pepper plants that have started to grow nicely over there I did replant five new peppers so hopefully they'll get a chance to grow and I did top these pepper plants and as you can see it already has a little bud starting to grow off the one side my avocados are still looking quite sad um, I'm not really sure what to do about them but we're just going to leave them as they are. I think I'm starting to burn, so I need to go put some sunscreen on. But before I do that, I just want to show you my Berlotti bean harvest. Let's get to harvesting. Last garden tour, these beans were just small and I hadn't had a harvest from them yet. But over this past month, they have just exploded and I have harvested so many beans from them. We've been eating beans like every day for dinner but it's awesome. I love these beans and will definitely grow them again next year. So these are the Berlotti Red Rooster Bush Beans. Okay, so another pretty good harvest of beans. So I think we can have some dinner tonight. We are out here a little bit earlier than yesterday, so we're on day three of this garden tour. What I was trying to do yesterday afternoon, where I did get a little bit burnt, um, was I was trying to clear out this section over here with the peppers. So because it's on the edge of the garden, it was there were ferns, there were vines, there were all sorts of things starting to encroach on the edge of my garden space and it was shading out the peppers. So I needed to clear that out so we can get full sun on these peppers so we can get as many hot peppers this year as we can. You can't even really see in the camera what I did yesterday, but we got to this point here where that tall thing needs to go because that big bush turns into that big tree and it has so much pollen on it that it just agitates your skin and your your respiratory system and all of that so that's got to go those vines have got to go um yesterday i actually found that some of the vines were wrapping around the peppers so i just need to get that all under control <laughs> I 
I love my Adagi garden tools that I use. So I have my rusty saw that I found lying around the shed and I have my hedge clippers which were the cheapest ones I could find at the store and they are now falling apart on me. So the handle every few snips starts to fall off but luckily my rake is good. <laughs> I've just cleaned out the end here and this passion fruit vine is actually like going into the bush but when I was looking at that I actually saw that all of those vine hoppers are on the end here like a big clump of them so I need to get my neem oil out and just spray this vine but before I do that I just need to clear out this whole fence there are so many weeds going through it so it's not just the weeds going through the fence, but these huge bushes that are on the outside of the fence, like this thistle bush here. I'm just trying to cut those out first uh, because they're just a huge eyesore in the garden and they're starting to grow so tall that they are shading all of the plants that are around the border of the garden. And I don't want that to affect the growth of the good plants that I want there. Unfortunately, the easiest way to reach them is what I'm doing now, just being inside the garden, leaning over the fence to cut them down. Um, it's better than if I were to have to wade through like knee-high weeds, because I know there are loads of spiders living in that bush, and I do not want to be going in there with them. We have cleared out the space by the fence. Oh boy, it took a long time, but it's all clear. Now I need to finish spraying the passion fruit with the neem oil to get rid of these of vine hoppers. And then I'll show you the beautiful passion fruit and what we have growing. We've got some smaller ones growing on here. And then we have some that are growing a little bit bigger and weighing down the vine actually. So we have these two and sorry, they are wet because I just did spray the neem oil because there were so many vine hoppers. I do have about 20 of the passion for growing on this vine and the other vine, which was in trouble the last time that you saw it, it did die. So I do have to clear that off the fence today. But the passion fruit that are growing, the golden passion fruit, they won't be ready till autumn. So you'll see uh, the different stages of growth each month as we do our garden tour. I'm taking the netting off of my blueberries to tidy everything up and I found this weird little guy. Can anybody identify him? It's some sort of weird spider. He looks dangerous because he's yellow and has a thorned back. There's also these weird little cocoon things in here with him. Is that his egg sack? I'm not really sure. There's two of them. I've kind of got the heebie-jeebies. I had to walk away from that blueberry plant. I did Google to see about what kind of spider it is. It's called the two-spined spider from Australia. And apparently it's been in New Zealand since the 70s. It's not poisonous, it's harmless to humans, but it does like citrus plants or fruit trees. And those were both egg sacs. Ugh. Eey. Those were both egg sacs that it has. And um, yeah they hatch into hundreds of little spiders each so oh he's good for the she is good for the environment and my garden because it eats moths and stuff mm, I'll see how long I can live with it but it's creeping me out <laughs> On the plus side, my blueberry plants are doing really, really well. They have a ton of new growth on them, but still waiting for these blueberries to ripen. I'm sure you can see behind me that dead passion fruit. So we're just gonna get that off of the fence right now. I 
had this like really good vision that this front fence would just be like covered in beautiful green vines. It's a shame it died. I'll have to replace it with something else next year. Or this year. <laughs> I've had that wrong all along. So the one that died is the golden passion fruit. So that's different than what I thought because what I'd read on, well, I thought that was, no, I thought I had bought the normal passion fruit first, but apparently not. Um, and when I read online, it said that the regular passion fruit are more susceptible to diseases than the other ones. So I thought for sure the golden passion fruit was one that was all right. Then there are my bean plants. So my bean plants have been, have been producing so well. I have been getting just all purple beans, but I can see in there now that there's tons ready to harvest and they're not all purple. Oh, look at these big long green ones. We're gonna pull some of these now. So there are still purple ones in here that are growing and I'm going to leave some of these green ones to see if they get thicker. So I can tell that some of these plants are just kind of gearing down while others are just gearing up. There are literally so many beans in here. Oddly enough, I only found one plant with yellow beans in there. So I did buy a mixed combo and some purple ones on their own, so I was expecting more purple ones, but one yellow plant? Mm. Now this is the end of the bed that was completely empty the last time. And now it's filled with more tomatoes. <laughs> this is an indeterminate tomato, but the rest of these guys will be determinate. So I haven't been doing much pruning with them. I'm just getting some of the leaves off of the ground and yeah, they're growing quite well. So I have these three here. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be the cream sausage tomatoes. And on the other side of the bed, I just have a couple tomatillos growing here. So they, I noticed they grow a little bit slower than the tomato goes. That's my beautiful second half of the garden here. That's the majority of what's growing over in the main garden. So we're heading over right now to the vineyard garden and I'll show you how that's going, which don't get your hopes up because not much <laughs> is going on over here. The soil I think needs a bit more work and plus it's been super super rainy and with all of the rain it has just been f like flooding. And keep in mind it does need to be weeded over here still and I still have not done that entrance way. At least the brush that I had like thrown on top is keeping the high grass from growing in. So I think that's a positive. But I have three lonely tomatoes over here that are all different types. I have a Roma tomato there, an ox heart, and this is another one of those Kumados. So I planted this one at the same time I planted the other one. So you can see that it's really not growing well, although this does have bigger tomatoes. Um, <laughs> the plant is just so tiny it really has not gotten any taller none of them really have since i put them over here so i'm not sure really what's going on but there was a tomato on the ox heart 
yesterday morning I saw it beaming red from the kitchen and I went to go pick it last night when I was watering the plants and it was completely gone so some animal must have got it but they did not leave any remnants of it I have my gherkins growing along this fence which there is a gherkin there there we are I can eat him while I sit and talk with you guys but there's not much else going on over here. I was going to trellis them up on this fence, but they're really not growing. As you can see, the birds are sitting here on the fence, so they are definitely the ones who got my tomato. And my strawberry patch is looking so sad. I put in all of these strawberries and they are just burnt to a crisp. They were so soggy over here in this ground and now they're just burnt so i don't really know what i'm gonna do with them i feel like i just need to dig them all up and replant them somewhere else i was planning on having so many strawberries and i have had a lot of strawberries but none of them <laughs> except for little tiny ones have come from this garden so something needs to be done here but i need to rework this if we start from these beautiful flowers here and work our way up there they are all of our grapes are growing and they look just beautiful look at that and it's cascading down into the grass there weren't a ton of grapes that i had seen growing growing yet but i do see some right now that i can show you and they are a little bit bigger than last month last year we harvested so many of them and had a lot of jam so i know that if they aren't growing yet they will grow the only other thing i can show you is something that we have around the front that i believe is quite new we have a fig tree it's a white fig tree and there are some figs growing on it one up there and they're at various stages of growing so that's really exciting we have figs and that and we also have pepinos <laughs> which i have never heard of them before but i saw them at the store and i thought they were really cool so right now we have a few growing and they take some time they should be ready in autumn this one is a ruby pepino so that's what it looks like on the inside and apparently it tastes like a melon like a rock melon and then i also have a pepino el camino which isn't doing quite as well but that is this one here so this one oh maybe has one little guy growing on it and this one's had a little bit tougher of a life so far but that will also have the same inside but the outside is just yellow that is it for today's video if you did enjoy watching my garden tour please give it a like and subscribe and you can come back and see me every month with my garden tour and see all of the other videos that i have to offer thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one hold on let's wait one minute before i end this video i want to show you what the heck has been going on so I was talking to you about that parsley and how the birds were eating it. It is completely bare. <laughs> they came back last night and it is bare. There is not a leaf on it. Ridiculous. <laughs>